everybody and welcome to our channel Frugal Queen in France. If you're here for the very first time, I'm Jane. My husband Mike is the other half of the Frugal Queen in France team. We're British, early retirees, debt and mortgage free and we live a lovely but very frugal life here in France. And every Wednesday we invite you into our lives and we have a midweek money chat where we talk about saving money. So let's take a look at what we're going to be talking about this week. Regular viewers, you'll notice we are not in the comfort of our own living room this week. We are out and about and having a great time. And this week is all about having a frugal, thrifty and money-saving vacation, how to get the best for your money and how to have a really cheap holiday here in France. Without further ado, let's look at seven ways that you can have a really good holiday on a budget and save loads of money too. Let's get started. Now, I do like to give you some context and I do like to give you some background. We're retired and we're living here in France and we've been here since 2019, then the pandemic hit. So really, we haven't had a chance up until now to get out and about, to look for holidays, or even to have a holiday at all. So this is our first time out and about and doing this. Second thing you need to know is that we're on holiday with our dogs. So this is all about our dog-friendly holiday too. And that means we won't be doing things like going and eating in restaurants because we are not the type of dog owners who would leave our dogs in a strange place. We wouldn't want them to bark or howl or be distressed or make any damage, for example. So wherever we go, they go with us. And we're completely self-catering and let's get into that. So that's some background information for you. Let's get into seven ways that you can save money and have a budget but really good holiday. Now I'm down on the beach and filming here so please excuse my hat and the fact that my face is shaded so I apologise for that. But let's get into my first point and let's talk about when and where. Now we used a popular online booking site to find a rental and we chose that as a really good option for us because as I said to you we are travelling with dogs and we needed to find a dog friendly option. But even with that you really can do your research and get a very very good deal. So when you're talking at location you might know where you want to go but within that location for example we're here at a popular seaside touristy location. There are bits of it that are more expensive than other bits. We did our research on that. So we kind of broadened ourselves, not from the centre of the location, but to the five further reaches of that location. And that saved us money. By not having direct view of the beach and the sea ourselves, that saved us money. We also found a studio apartment and that saved us money. So do your research, keep looking, keep drilling down, keep finding those better deals because anomalies will pop up. And this is an important thing as well. It's the when. Now, as I said, we're retired, so we can we can go and travel whenever we like. And if you are in that position that you can book your vacation whenever you want, that you can go whenever you like, there's going to be the low season, the off seasons. And often early in the season is cheaper than the end of the season. And here in France, for example, there are an awful lot of bank holidays. So the first two weeks in May are more expensive than the third and fourth week in May. The, the final two weeks of June are more expensive than the first two weeks of June. July and August is really expensive, but the kids go back to school in the middle of August, so the end of August can be cheaper. So do your research locally. Look at the where, so you know where you want to go, but find the cheaper parts of where you want to go. Then look at the when. When are the cheaper parts? So you may want to go in June, but which week in June? which week in September. Do your research and keep drilling down on that and then log out. 
And the next time you log in, the algorithm will know that you're looking for something and it'll start showing you the deals of when you want to go. Because often the proprietors are lowering their prices for certain weeks that they haven't booked. So keep looking for those. The where and the when will really save you money with a little bit of research. Now, the next part of getting a really, really good deal is checking out the facilities. And that doesn't mean just the facilities in the rental, but around you as well. That will help you save money. Now, we wanted to get as much as we could for the money for our budget. We really wanted to stretch our budget as far as we could. Like I said, we're traveling with our dogs. We're doing all of our catering in the little rental apartment that we've got. So we were looking at them and these are things you have to be careful about when you're looking at a rental apartment, especially here in a busy resort like this. You might see a bed, you might think to yourself, oh good, there's a bedroom. And then you might see a sofa and you might go, oh good, there's a living room. But then you need to look carefully because sometimes it's a sofa bed. Or we didn't want that. So we had a whole list of things that we were looking for that we wanted for our money. We wanted a separate bedroom. We wanted a double bed. We wanted a separate bathroom for privacy. We wanted good cooking facilities. We needed to make sure there was a hob, there was an oven, there was a microwave, there was a coffee machine, a dishwasher, a washing machine and all of those things. And you might think, well, why does that save you money? Like I said, we're traveling with our dogs. We're completely self-catering in the apartment. We wanted to make sure that we had all the mod cons, the bells and whistles and absolutely everything we could get for our money. There were compromises we made to get a good price though. We decided we didn't need Wi-Fi. We decided that we didn't need a TV. We decided on things that we didn't need. There was a TV, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a no-no for us. There were things that we needed. There were things that we weren't needed. There were compromises that we made. But you do your research as well. And especially if you're traveling with children, are there, is there a bath if you've got little children and you don't want to put them in the shower and you want to bath them? Those are just for examples. Is there a dryer, a washer and a dryer? Because if the weather's bad, you want to wash things, you want to dry them. Is there some outside space? Can you sit outside? Is there some kind of privacy? But really do your research about this. And the proprietors, they want to rent to you. They want your business. So Feel free to ask them a load of questions. You want to get your money's worth. And let's face it, if you're paying 350 to 500 euros for seven nights of rental, that's a lot of money that you've saved. That's a big deal. You really do want to make sure that you get as much as you possibly can for the amount that you have paid. Now, the next important thing, if you're like us, you have a set budget, you live on a budget, you budgeted for this holiday, something that's really important to know are the local supermarkets because you can come to a resort town like this and it's really nice and it's swish and it's really quite fancy and there's a fancy supermarket and it's a lot more expensive than a regular supermarket but with a little bit of research you can often find the regular budget supermarkets here in France those are of course Lidl, Netto and Aldi and often they're on the outskirts of the town a little bit of research before you go somewhere maybe you may need to stop at the town before you get to the resort to check that and find that out or you of course might like us because we're traveling with dogs and there is no way I'm going to leave my dogs in a hot car in a supermarket car park. So like us, you may have done your shopping maybe the day before and have gone to your regular budget supermarket. But it's the important factor to think of if you're on a budget and you are self-catering, there may not be those budget supermarkets near you and you may need to go to them en route to the destination you're going to. For example, some of these uh, areas like this, one resort that we went and visited, for example, there was only what we would call a little local supermarket. It was called a car for like a local. And in the UK, we would call that something like a Tesco Metro. And often they're in busy, popular areas. 
they've probably got more rent to pay, more, more business rates to pay, and that's reflected in the prices that they charge as well. So do a little bit of research, find those budget supermarkets if that's what you normally shop, if that's where you normally shop, and take a bit of time to find them before you go, or maybe even do what we do, because like I said, we've traveled with dogs, and do your shopping before you go. <laughs> If you're a regular to the channel, you will know that we really do live on a budget and we budget for our food very carefully and we menu plan and that is absolutely no different from our holiday. We have budgeted for our food, we've budgeted a little bit more, we've had some nicer things but the one way that we've afforded that is in the same way that we afford to have nicer food for Christmas. We've bought things, for example, I went into the supermarket and there was one third off two entrecots which is a ribeye steak now we'd normally have that for a special occasion but because it was discounted and it was like a short date on it i popped it in the freezer i did the same again when i saw some salmon steaks on offer i popped them in the freezer and the things like the occasional bottle of wine or some treats or snacks that we've had for ourselves on holiday or we might have at christmas time I buy them a bit at a time and I put them away. So it's something that I think people do when they budget for holidays and they self cater and there's nothing wrong with that. It might even be that you might just have a, a envelope system and you're saving for a bit more for it, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with menu planning. Even though we're self catering, I don't want to be standing there shopping and simmering and doing things. Although I do know people who will take a slow cooker on holiday with them, which is a great way of saving money, sticking in a casserole or something to have for when they get back after a day out. And there's nothing wrong with that, but we wanted to make things simple. So we've literally done things like brought tin vegetables. I've bought bags of new potatoes that just needed washing and cooking. And I've got lots of salad and things that are really, really easy to cook. And if you're interested, and what I cooked in our rental that was really simple on our holiday menu, watch our Friday video. But like I said, there's nothing wrong with a quick menu plan to make sure that you're covered. You've bought seven breakfasts, you've got seven lunches, and you've got seven dinners, and you've got some treats and snacks in there too. So if you want to save money, there is absolutely nothing wrong with putting a menu plan of really quick and simple things to do for your food budget save you loads of money. <laughs> thing about saving money when you're on a vacation when you're on your holiday might not seem very obvious but I can tell you from experience it really is it's important and these things really do need to come with you to save money and it's bring a small emergency pack bring some painkillers bring some antihistamines bring some sting spray because you would be surprised how many bugs and things want to bite you especially if you're on a low tide beach like me at the moment I don't know what it is I don't know where they are but they seem to bite me and I and I itch them so it's really important to have some antihistamines because you do not want to go into the local pharmacies because they're smaller their business rates are higher and it's reflected in the prices that they charge and it's also it's an inconvenience too isn't it Bring some antiseptic wipes with you and also just bring some, like, bring some Imodium with you. You don't know how, you just don't know how you could overeat. Well, let's face it, we can do on holiday, can't we? Bring some anti, anti indigestion tablets with you. Just those little things and a first aid kit as well. Just those things can be more expensive in resorts. And especially if you're, you're coming to France and you're not used to it, you can't buy medication in the supermarket. You can only buy that in a pharmacy. And the pharmacy's got to run a business, they've got to make money, and those things are a lot more expensive. We got them all from our local pharmacy before we came. We really did make sure that we were gonna not be caught out. So bring a small emergency pack with you of those little things that you might need. Now 
Now the next point I want to raise about saving money on holiday and really sticking within your budget and that's bringing some entertainment with you and it's something that we've we've done for years and years and years now and uh, something that we like to bring with us we bring our old laptop with us and we bring DVDs with us and we've got a local charity shop with us near us and it's run by some British people and lots of British people frequent it and donate to it and we bought a stack of DVDs. I think they're like three DVDs for a euro. So we've had a movie night every night. But another thing that I bring with me is occasionally some like a jigsaw or some board games. Because as I keep saying and I keep reminding you, we are travelling with dogs. So it's, we would never leave our dogs and go off out in the evenings. And even though you can take the dogs out, we go out walking you know, we, they, they're our priority, so they're our priority. So bring entertainment, and especially if you're traveling with children, bring some small games, bring some board games. They're not very heavy, they pack into the car quite easily. A deck of cards is something great to bring with you. And another thing is books. And do you know what we do with ours when we finish with all of these after going on a trip? We donate them straight back to the charity shop. So everyone's a winner in those circumstances, aren't they? But bring some entertainment with you. <laughs> Now, something that we like to do when we're going away and we really do want to do it on a budget and we haven't got a lot of money is we always look for things that we can do that don't cost anything at all. And we love discovering places like this, these little hidden coves and beaches. We love to go and find those walks and trails. And of course, we've got our dogs with us too. So they just... They can't get out and about enough, can they? It's really, really good for them. Check out though, and I will add to this, most of the beaches in resorts, you can't take your dogs onto the beach, but we always find really great places to sit just off the beach. That's really, really nice. So we've kind of by the beach, but not on the beach. And often when the tide comes in, it's meters away from us. But another thing that we always plan to do is we always plan to do days of nothing. So if you've got a rental and there's some outside space, take a couple of days just to sit there. Take a couple of days just to play those board games, to read those books, to watch those movies. Just chill out and sit on the balcony and don't overfill our days. We don't need to. It's a great way to have a break is to spend time doing absolutely nothing at all. So plan some days where you don't do anything at all. Well, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. We were going to make this video when we got home again, but I thought, oh, I'm down on the beach now. Mike's sitting back up there, looking down on the beach with the dogs on his lap. He's got a book with him at the moment. He's enjoying the sunshine. And I just thought I'd take this time to have this midweek money chat with you here. I really love the interaction that we get. So tell me, if you go out on a trip, how do you save money? How do you do that? How do you have a thrifty trip? Do you, for example, like we do, go at the early or the end of the season? Do you self-cater? And who takes their dogs with them on holiday too? So tell me all about it. Just leaves me to say thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now. <laughs>